Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> okay, so I'm really not here to talk about nutrition, believe it or not. Um, I'm really sad about those oranges. I'll take them if they're not spoiled already. Yeah, okay. So, um, food day, I'm going to talk about what is it and how you can help um, for 2014. The website is www.foodday.org and it's a nationwide celebration um, and a movement for healthy, affordable, and sustainable food. So there are five priorities and three focus areas for Food Day. And we pretty much focused on the first three of those priorities last year. Um, and the focus areas, uh, they've actually changed them a little bit this year. Uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes as far as the details. And it was created by the Center for Science and the Public Interest. And you can see um, lots of gangplank folks in these photos from last year's Food Day, uh, which was held at the Chandler Farmers Market. So give it up for DCCP and their wonderful market that they have for us downtown. Um, we have, of course, uh, several Gangplank members who helped out with being the Mr. Tomato Guy. We had lots of um, um, local talent as well as Gangplank community talent. I don't know where the photos of Jade and the, and the rockers are, but we have some? Okay, I'd love to get a hold of them. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, we were promoting local food, local food sources, local farmers, um, and food suppliers. So that's a little bit of a, a photo shoot from last year and our sponsors from last year, many of which you can see are Gangplank community members. So, of course, we appreciated all the help with, with um, presenting Food Day for the community last year. So the focus areas are food education, food and health, and campuses. So um, we, we mostly focus on, on food education and food and health. And last year we tried to incorporate um, the community at large. Um, and hopefully as things grow, we'll incorporate more of the campuses around the East Valley. <clears throat> and this year, uh, we're going to be involving more of the schools and children um, in our overall event. So um, here you can see um, some little tidbits about why they focus on these areas. Um, when kids learn about where food come fr comes from and how to prepare it, they tend to make better choices or healthier choices, as most of us do, but especially children. And then um, for food and health, um, 150, that's supposed to be 150 million, um, sorry, 150 billion dollars in healthcare costs that are diet related. So those tend to be chronic diseases such as heart disease, obesity, we've all kind of heard about that, um, diabetes and so forth. And then 50% of water usage, this is an example of how our food supply actually impacts the environment. 50% um, of that water usage um, for the food supply. An example is 338 gallons for one burger. And that would be three ounces of beef. So the priorities, sorry. The priorities are to promote safer and healthier diets, support sustainable and organic farms, um, for me, that means local, and um, that was one of our main focal points last year is to try to support our local farmers as well as local su food suppliers. And by the way, that also means any local businesses that also participate in that um, um, process. So for those of you who do maybe advertising or website development for those small businesses and farms. Um, reducing hunger is also a very important priority, and um, Trinity Donovan helped us out a great deal with that last year. Um, 
And that was one of the areas through doing this that I learned a lot about. And I had no idea that there's a food desert right here within a mile of gangplank. And if you are like our mayor and don't know what a food desert is, please watch the, um, the film. Jill, what's the name of it? <laughs> um, a Place at the Table. That one. Yeah, that one. So A Place at the Table was one of our Film Fest films that Trinity was able to um, get for us and uh, really enlightened me a lot about how um, not just the food desert here within our community, but how, just how many food deserts there were in this wealthy country of ours. <clears throat> it was quite an eye-opener for me to learn about that. Um, the other two priorities that we didn't really focus on so much, but um, they're a part of the, the food system, is reforming factory farms to protect animals in the environment. For example, CAFOs can hold 50,000 to 100,000 animals. Um, a, a CAFO is a confined animal um, feeding operation. All you have to do is go down to the city of Maricopa and you can smell those. You can drive through the dust. I don't recommend it at night because it's really hard to get through there uh, as far as seeing where you're going. Um, and then the abuses, illnesses, environmental degradation, and the health issues for the local population around those CAFOs. Um, finally, the last priority is supporting fair working conditions and, uh, for food and farm workers. And there are about 20 million far farm workers and wait staff, and most of those make below the poverty level in wages. And again, we focused on, um, for our local food day, we focus on the top three of those to promote safer and healthier diets, sustainable and organic farms, and reducing hunger. So for 2014, our theme here is go local, eat real, and get healthy. And the local priorities will be healthy and affordable and sustainable food. And then our local focus is going to be growing in community. Um, that has a lot to do with uh, gangplank and growing awareness and supporting local farming and food suppliers. Our emphasis w this year is going to be on kids and the arts. Our events this year are going to include the farmers markets. Hopefully we'll be able to reach out to some of the other local markets um, in addition to the Chandler market and have a presence there um, and bring more people and attendees to the farmers markets themselves. And then our food and film fest, um, the whole month of October, as well as the main event at Gangplank on October 24th. This date is a national day. Um, lots of things happen within other communities across the nation. I think there were 4,500 events last year, and this started in 2011 when they had, I think, 200 and something events across the country. So um, just in the last three years, it's grown from about 200 events to four, over 4,500 events. Okay, so um, how, what can you do to help out? Um, in the early phase, which is uh, January through May, that's right now, you can visit the website. Again, that was www.foodday.org. And um, the best thing to do to get to understand um, what Food Day is about is to look at the priorities and the descriptions there, which I've left out of this presentation, and then also the focus areas. They've got a huge website, and it's very informative and lots of resources, um, and a nice blog, too, with all the different celebrities across the country that support Food Day. Um, you can also help by spreading the word to potential attendees, volunteers, partners, and sponsors. And right now, the big thing, of course, is getting sponsorship so that we can um, have that aspect of planning out of the way um, and not be panicking at the last minute to try to provide a great event for the community without any funding. Um, and then, of course, social media like sharing and commenting or tweeting about uh, various um, progresses along the way. Um, and then of course the event itself, as well as the priorities. Um, another way you can help out is to suggest, invite, or be a sponsor or a potential partner. 
Um, and the difference between a partner and a, a sponsor for Food Day is that, I guess with most events, a partner is someone who participates in the actual um, event. For example, last year we had the Arizona Herb Association, which Eileen helped us um, get on board. Um, the Arizona University of Arizona Cooperative Extension for Maricopa County, they came out and did um, some things with the kids for SNAP Ed in the community, um, teaching them that you know they could use their uh, um, food credits at the farmers market, um, as well as um, encouraging them to eat fruits and vegetables, the whole five a day campaign, and so forth. And then um, attending. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, and then, of course, a sponsor would be either a person or organization that provides either an in-kind, um, uh, not necessarily monetary gift, but a service or a product that would help us out towards our goals in presenting this for the community, as well as monetary sponsorship. And then <clears throat> another way you can help out is attending the planning um, team and volunteer night, April 21st. That will be here at Gangplank. And um, it'll start at 7 o'clock, but I've um, put 6.30 because I'd like to find someone to provide some food that will help us bring in people from the community. And if you know anyone from outside of the Chandler area, I would love to bring in more people from the East Valley this year. Uh, we did have some people involved um, as partners from uh, Mesa as well as um, Tempe. Um, we had someone from Apache Junction, um, and then of course um, lots of people here from around the Chandler area. And finally, for this initial phase, being a planning or team leader, uh, being a planning team leader, and that would uh, take about five to ten hours a month depending on the task and also the phase at which we're in. And the meetings will be the third Mondays from April to October, one hour. Okay, and then the middle phase is June to August. So um, again, spreading the word, using social media, and then volunteering to help a planning team leader with the logistics of their particular task. And the late phase would be the same thing, as well as volunteering to set up, clean up, um, either at the Film Fest, the Farmer's Market, or the main event. Okay, so dates to remember and vol uh, that are gearing up for Food Day and Food Day itself is April 21st, like I've just mentioned, and the third Mondays. And then October 3rd, 10th, 7th, and the 24th, we'll be having a um, Food and Film Fest here at Gangplank. And um, then October 23rd is the Chandler Farmer's Market. So this year, uh, last year we were really fortunate that Food Day fell on the same day as the Farmer's Market. Um, I'd like to still have a presence at Farmer's Market and help support the Farmer's Market and bring hopefully more and more people to, uh, to our market and support it so that we can have it available to us in the future. And then, of course, October 24th, from 1 to 10 p.m., this includes the setup and cleanup time um, for our main event here at Gangplank. Okay, so any questions? Uh, yeah. yeah. You mentioned something about food credits that are able to be used at the farmer's market. What is um, for like the, um, it used to be called food stamps. I, oh, I'm not sure. Food yeah. Mm -hmm. the food stamps? Yeah. So they were, they were um, at the U of A booth last year, the SNAP Ed booth. They were helping parents and children understand that they could use awesome. their... So you can technically use your SNAP card at the food market? Yes, you can. Yes, you can oh, use them wow. at the farmer's market. No? Not the farmer's market. You can use the check, but not the card. Okay. They have to have the Okay, thank you for that clarification. <laughs> um, but there, there, across the nation, there are more and more um, food, uh, food trucks um, that go into communities. Uh, there are more and more farmers markets, uh, you know, along with this food movement that we're experiencing in the country. Um, 
encouraging, encouraging and being encouraged to allow people that are on um, assistance to purchase fresh produce that way. And that has a lot to do with the food deserts. Um, what are the food deserts? What are the food deserts? It's like a okay. <laughs> So the food deserts are basically areas in which people don't have access to healthy food. So um, a good example, a really ironic example, is um, the valley in California where a, a very large percentage of our produce for this country is produced. Um, there was a report on NPR about five years ago about how the kids in that community, they had nowhere to get food except the local I think it was some Circle K or some kind of convenience store, um, and they didn't have fresh produce, produce there. So right there in the middle of that farming community, um, the people that live there, you know, all that food got shipped off to the rest of the country, and the people that live there actually did not have access to that food. There weren't grocery stores there that provided um, fresh produce for people to buy. So that, that's one example of a food desert. People that um, don't have access through transporta transportation to get to um, a grocery store that has food, as another example, like there's a lot of food deserts in certain urban areas in the country. Like New York, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, they tend to be, obviously, in a lot of either urban areas or rural areas. And there is a map on the Food Day website that has, um, you can see, you know, it's a color map of distribution of where the food deserts are, and it's quite astounding. Any other questions? Okay, so um, I just wanted to remind you, April 21st, there are some flyers here for that if you would like to pass those out to anyone you think might be interested in getting involved. Um, they're up here on the front. And then also for Gangplank Health, we have several activities upcoming. Um, I had CPR on here for classes provided by the fire department. Um, if anyone's interested in that, please let me know. Um, and then March 9th is a Sunday morning for a spring hike at Superstitions and then lunch at Los Gringos Locos afterwards. Um, drowning Prevention Walk is March 29th. At the, uh, it's, not, it's not at the Chandler Farm uh, Fire Department. It's uh, down the road at the park that way. I forgot the name of the park right now. But it's on Meetup and sure. Thanks. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, the name of that park. Does anybody know the name of the park? Yeah, I think so. The one down by the fire department and the elementary school passed on uh, Fry. Yeah, I believe that's where the... It's on Meetup and Facebook events for Gangplank. And then April 27th, Family Day in the Park, and then the month of May is Bicycle Safety Month. If you have any requests for May, Bicycle Safety Month, would you please let me know? And thank you very much.